Hi, Girl Scouts. It's so good to see you all. And uh, we're so excited that you're joining us for Inspiring Futures. You might have been on one of my calls before <clears throat> to meet these inspiring women. So I'm Katie Hurstein, and I'm the Program and Events Manager at Girl Scouts of Colorado. And in my job, I get to be the pretty lucky one to get to introduce um, all these women from the virtual series um, to you. And uh, so you can be uh, inspired by what they do because they're very accomplished women in a variety of professions. So, um, and we have a perfect partner for our Inspiring Future series and that's College Invest. So College Invest, they're a Colorado's college saving program um, and it makes it easy to save for education past high school. So it's a fancy way of saying that they exist for just one reason, and that's to help you and your families put away money to save for your inspired future. So I started a college invest uh, savings plan for both of my daughters when we moved to Colorado about 10 years ago. And I now have a daughter going off to college in the fall, and I'm really glad that we actually put away some money to help save for college. So it's like a college um, savings plan. It's like a piggy bank where, um, but even better, actually, because the money that you put into it, um, your grandparents, caregivers, friends can put money into it, and it grows tax-free. So when it comes time to use it, you don't have taxes on top of it. And so your money kind of goes further. And uh, college invest savings plans can be used for trade schools, apprenticeships, colleges all across the country. So we're going to hear a quick message from the CEO of College Invest now, and uh, she's welcoming us to Inspiring Futures. Hi, I'm Angela Beyer, CEO of College Invest, and welcome to this episode of Inspiring Futures. Through Girl Scouts, you've learned that if you can dream it, you can do it. And here at College Invest, Colorado's Education Savings Program, we help you get there. And you're never too young to begin to imagine your inspired future. So how will you impact this world? Will you run your own business, invent a new technology, or maybe even discover a life-saving cure? But wherever your inspiration takes you, a College Invest Savings Plan can help make your dreams a reality. Now, prepare to be inspired. That was nice to hear from Angela and a couple of housekeeping items. So um, we're recording this session, but uh, we, so that we can put it up on YouTube and some Girl Scouts that might miss tonight can watch it at other times. Um, but we'd be happy to have your cameras on and interact today. It'd be great to hear from you and see you if it's possible. Um, when it does get recorded and put on YouTube, I'll make sure that we cover up any of the girls' faces so that it doesn't have to be up to the public. So, but we'd love to see you now. Um, so whatever works for you is great for us. So, and before we start all the meetings, we go through our Girl Scout law and our promise. And so if you'd like to unmute yourselves and, and do along with me, this along with me, that'd be great. You ready, girls? On my honor, I will try okay. to serve God in my country, in my country to help people at all times, all times and to live, and to by, live the by the Girl Scout law. Yeah. I will do my best my to be honest, honest and fair, and fair friendly and helpful, helpful considering very caring, courageous and strong, and, strong, and responsible, responsible for, for what I say and, 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 and to respect myself and others, others respect authority, authority Use these resources wisely, make the world, world a better, a better place, place, and be a Girl Scout. Every Girl Scout. All right, with that, I want to introduce all of you to Miss Colorado Rodeo 2022, Ashley Baller. So she, as of the stroke of midnight, uh, starting this year, she was crowned um, Miss Rodeo Colorado. And we're so happy to have her here. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen and we can all be introduced to Ashley. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me okay, Katie? I sure can. Wonderful. Well, ladies, I am so excited to be speaking with you today. This is certainly a highlight of my day and my week, and I am just so proud of you all for working on your futures together. We're going to have so much fun today. I'm going to pull up a presentation, and we're going to talk about what it means to be a rodeo queen, 
We're going to talk about rodeo. We're going to talk about my life story. And last but not least, we're going to talk about all about horses. My favorite topic in the world. I love horses. I've loved horses since I was just at your age. Many, many years ago, I started riding when I was six years old. So we're going to learn all about that. And before we get started, I will go ahead and share my screen. So everybody just give me one second here and we'll get going. Thank you for your patience, everyone. Katie, is my um, presentation visible? Uh-oh. Yes, sorry, I had trouble with my mouse getting to the unmute button, but we it was there. It's not Yay, there right is now, it still but there? it was there. Okay. Are we looking good now? No, actually, I don't see it right now. It was there. Hmm. Let's see. Can you see it like this? No. Uh, really? Okay. All right, Girl Scouts, just wait one second here. We're going to make this work. No problem. Okay, can you see it here, Katie? We can. You just need to put it in presentation mode and... Um... All right, let's see now. Are we yep. still good? Perfect. Yay, okay, just stop me at any point if it um, doesn't appear anymore. Well, ladies, let's go ahead and get started. And this is going to be really fun. I want everybody to be engaged. If you have questions, feel free to ask questions at any time. I'm going to be asking you a couple of questions as well. And what I would like to do is after each slide, I will open the floor for questions. So make sure that you're um, writing them down and thinking of some fun ones because this is gonna be a great time to learn about rodeo. So Katie, thank you so much for introducing me as the 2022 Miss Rodeo Colorado. This has been a dream of mine for about 10 years now. So I was really excited to be able to accomplish it this year. So here's what we're gonna learn about today. We're gonna learn a little bit about me. We're gonna learn about who Miss Rodeo Colorado is. You're gonna get to meet my horses, how you can get involved in the equine and agricultural industries. We're gonna talk about English and Western disciplines with horses, equine nutrition, vet care, barrier care and equine dental exams. So like I said, this is one of my favorite topics in the world is horses. So about me, I started riding horses, like I said, when I was six years old, and I come from a family that had um, no horses, no farm animals, no ranch animals before. I am a first generation cowgirl. So I was the first in my family to get interested, and my step grandpa got me started. So he put me on his broodmare, and a broodmare is a mare who her job is to have foals or babies. And her name was Sassy. So I learned how to ride on Miss Sassy and she was an American paint horse. And once I started riding, I realized that, hey, I need something to ride my horses in. And so I joined 4-H and we're going to talk a lot about 4-H today because it's a really, really fun youth program where kids just like you can learn all about horses you can learn about swine, cattle, poultry. You can even learn about rocket sciences. But what I love 4-H for is the agricultural piece of it. And I want you all to know that today is actually National Agriculture Day, which is a really fun thing that we're celebrating with one another, learning about agriculture. So I grew up and I went to high school and then I graduated from high school and I showed horses all the way through then. I did all of the English disciplines, the Western disciplines. I was involved in even the shooting sports pro projects, some of the horse judging and the vet sciences. And then I went to Colorado State University. So I am from Colorado, 
Parker, Colorado specifically. And at Colorado State University, I graduated with a degree in guess what? Equine science, which is the study of horses. And then in addition to that, I got degrees, minors in business and Spanish. So we're going to learn all about why I decided to throw Spanish in the bunch as well. And after school, I then worked at the American Quarter Horse Association. And the American Quarter Horse Association is the largest equine breed registry in the entire world. There's over 6 million horses registered there. I think that's really crazy. And I worked in the international department. So I got to work with people who loved horses all around the globe. And then I decided that it was time to run for my goal of Miss Rodeo Colorado. We'll talk a little bit more about my history of my queening experience, but I held five previous Rodeo Queen titles. So I don't know if you all ever dreamed about being a princess before, but that was my lifetime dream. So I thought, well, I might as well just bring this to life. I love wearing a crown. I like being glittery and I like serving the world. So count me in, I'll be Miss Rodeo Colorado. So I believe that some of you may have gone to the National Western Stock Show. And at the National Western Stock Show, there's rodeos, there's livestock shows, there's a fair, you can go shopping. I know us girls love shopping, but what I loved was the rodeo piece. So before we get into talking about who Miss Rodeo Colorado is, who I am as Miss Rodeo Colorado, let's talk a little bit about the National Western Stock Show and if, if, if any of you have ever ridden a horse. So before we get started, can anybody tell me if they've ridden a horse before? We'll give you just a couple minutes to get the mute off and if not, we'll just keep on going. Looks like Leticia in the chat said yes. I know there are a couple other people that said yes too. Um, but girls, if you want, you can unmute Yes. 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 Oh, there's lots of yeses. <laughs> Yay! I love it. Spirit. It was for my sister Cora's birthday. How fun! Thank you so much for sharing with me your riding experience, everybody. I wish I could see you. For some reason, my screen's only showing me my presentation, but that's okay. I I know it's it's a really exciting time here in our computer screens. So let's go ahead and keep going. So Miss Rodeo Colorado, I am the 66th lady to hold this title. And the, we also have a Miss Rodeo America. So there's also 30 other state queens around the United States who are Miss Rodeos. So some of my friends are Miss Rodeo Wyoming. We have a Miss Rodeo Arkansas, even a Miss Rodeo Hawaii and a Miss Rodeo Alaska. I think that's pretty crazy that we've got rodeo queens all over the world, some on an island and some up in the snowy cold areas of Alaska. So what we do is we are the ideal ambassador or representative of Colorado's original sport, which is rodeo. So I don't know if any of you knew this, but rodeo started in Colorado in 1869. A long time ago, a bunch of cowboys got together and they tried to see who was the best at starting colts and starting horses. So when you start a horse or a colt, what happens is you teach them how to wear a saddle and how to ride with the human on their back for the very first time. It's a really fun and a really crazy experience. And I've even started a few of my own first colts. So as Miss Radio Colorado, I will travel more than 50,000 miles across Colorado, Colorado and the United States promoting rodeo and agriculture. So I'll go to rodeos, obviously, that one's given, but we'll, all, we'll also go to social and community type events. We'll visit schools. I was just at a school yesterday teaching kiddos about rodeo, and we were having some fun learning about bucking bronx and reading a great book. And in addition to that, we like to promote the tradition of the ways of the West. So if you can think of cowboys, you can think of the 
the Western shows where they have the ropes and they've got the rank horses and it's just a whole lot of fun and there's a lot of history there. So we like to promote the history and tell fun people like you about Miss, about rodeo and everything related to that because agriculture is what's going, it's what's feeding you all right now. Guess what? It turns out food doesn't start at the store. It starts at the farm and at the ranch whether people are farming corn and wheat, or if they're raising cattle for a hamburger, if you've ever had a hamburger or a cheeseburger. So now that we've learned about Miss Radio Colorado, I wanted to share a couple of pictures with you. So as you can see on the right with my red hat, that's when I was at a clinic recently teaching young ladies how to be a rodeo queen. So we spend a lot of time on stage. To the left of that, I was in Florida at a rodeo, and there was a lot of local queens there. And so those are younger gals. Some of them are your age who are also rodeo queens. Then next to that, that's me at a school visit. I'm reading some kiddos about a book about rodeo that was on National uh, Read Day. And then the far one on the left is me at the National Western Stock Show, and I'm carrying the Colorado State University flag. Does anybody have any questions about what it means to be Miss Rodeo Colorado? Ashley, we just had one comment that uh, one of the Girl Scouts has met Miss Rodeo Oklahoma last year, and she met Miss Rodeo Colorado last year. Really? Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing. Miss Kylie, the, the former Miss Radio um, Oklahoma, is one of my friends. And Haley, Miss Radio Colorado last year, is now Miss Rodeo America. So she's one of my friends, too. What do you do on stage? What do I do on stage? So I am usually holding a microphone and I'm speaking. So sometimes I'll do exactly what I'm doing right now, but I'll be in front of people. So I'll be entering, I'll be giving speeches about rodeo or speeches about my life history to try and inspire others. What do you need to do or um, hard work for to be a rodeo queen? Ooh, I can't wait to answer your question. I'm going to tell you all about the pageant experience in just a couple of minutes. So keep that question and think of some more because I'm going to tell you what it takes to be a rodeo queen. Okay. Great questions. Thank you. What, what was that question? Is it fun to be a rodeo queen? Oh, it's so much fun. It's my favorite thing in the world. Okay, we'll move on. So some of you might be wondering, what is rodeo? And rodeo, in rodeo, there's eight events now. There used to be seven, but now there's eight because we added another event for the ladies. So in the top right corner, you can see a woman roping a steer or a calf, and that's called the breakaway roping. So the calf runs out as fast as he can, and the horse runs as fast as he can, and she ropes him and then lets go, and the time stops. The other ladies' event is the barrel racing. So there's three cans. You can see the white horse running as fast as he can around that can right there, and the fastest time wins so long as they don't hit a barrel. To the left of that, you can see a ca two cowboys and one steer, and that cowboy is actually coming off his horse and onto the steer, and that's called steer wrestling. And again, with this one, the cowboy who gets the steer down the fastest wins, and those steers are really big, some of them 800 pounds. That means it takes a really strong cowboy to do that. And then some of the cowboys even ride bulls. So in the bottom left, you can see a cowboy riding a bull, and these cowboys are the rough stock cowboys. So there's two other events in rodeo that are rough stock. One of those is the saddle bronc riding, where they ride a saddle bronc horse, and this horse has eight seconds to buck his cowboy off, but the cowboy's in a saddle. So that, for some of them, you might think it's easier, but it's not because it's based on style. So get this, while the horse is bucking as hard as he can, the cowboy has to look really cool and stylish while he's doing it. And then the event without the saddle is called the bareback riding. And that's where the horses try and buck the cowboy off without a saddle. That one seems pretty tough to me. 
And then there's team roping. So you can see the Cowboys in the bottom right. This is the only team event in the, the um, sport of rodeo. So we've got a header. He backs into a box. And you've got your healer. He backs into another box. And you've got your steer in a middle box. So then when the cowboy nods his head, the horse runs out and he catches the horns of the steer and turns it really fast to the left. And then the healer throws his rope to the heels of the steer and catches it. And then the time stops when both of the ropes are tight. In addition to that, there's another event called the tie down roping, which you may have seen at the rodeo. Does anybody have any questions about rodeo before we keep going? Does that hurt a cowboy? It sometimes cowboys can get injured, but they're athletes like uh, football players or basketball players. So they're really practiced and really conditioned so that their muscles stay strong so that they're able to do their job well. Okay. Do a cowboy Great. fall? What did you say? Did the do horse cowboy fall? Sometimes they do, yeah. A lot of times in the in the rough stock events. So when the horses buck them off or the bulls. And one other thing I love to mention is how well we take care of our animals in rodeo because they're our athletes. So the steers, the um, calves, all the cattle are taken care of so well. They always have really clean water, lots of food and same with the horses because we depend on them to be our friends our family and our partners so that's what i love about rodeo is that we love our animals so much because we have to depend on them because if we didn't then we couldn't have rodeo so next i'll tell you a little bit about my mission so i am the first latina miss rodeo colorado which means that i am the first miss rodeo colorado that has a latin american descent so my family came from mexico hundreds of years ago and actually they started in spain so what i'm really excited about is that i speak spanish and i would like to be able to speak with people who speak english and spanish and increase those types of people working together within our industry so that we can all share our passion and love for our animals and agriculture and rodeo and in addition to that i since i'm a first generation cowgirl i really want it for other people and i want to show other people that you don't have to be born into it to get started and be successful in it so next my journey to the title so when i was younger i had my first title when i was 12 years old some young ladies can be as young as eight or nine and i was an elbert county fair princess i was then the deer trail rodeo attendant which if you remember it's home of the world's first rodeo um, for two years after that and then i was an elbert county fair queen and then elizabeth stampede attendant and then when I won Miss Rodeo Colorado, there's a few categories that I won in. So to win, you have to work really hard. You have to be knowledgeable all about rodeo, agriculture, and current events. You have to model on stage, answer impromptu questions, which mean that you pick a question out of a hat, and then you have only about 10 seconds to read it and a few minutes to answer it. So you don't even know what question you're going to get. And then you also give an extemporaneous speech. So that means you get a topic, you have a few minutes to write it, and then a minute, 30 seconds to give it on stage. And then you also have the writing pieces. So as you can see, this is a Palomino quarter horse right here. I rode her during the Greeley Stampede Rodeo, which is the rodeo I represent here in Colorado. And I had to show them that I could ride a horse and that I was confident in doing it. So you can see my Western trendy outfit here with the sparkly black skirt. You can see my um, green and pink outfit. That one's one of my favorites. I love pink and sparkles. And then over there on the left in the white dress, that's the day I found out that I won my dream job. What do you say, say on stage? Oh, I say all sorts of things. Sometimes it depends on the event. So recently I went to an event in Florida where I went to school visits. So when I'm on stage, I did just what we're doing now. I shared about why I love horses so much and why it's exciting for everyone to go watch a rodeo. 
How does it feel if you're the only cowgirl in your family? It, is your family proud of you for being the only one? Oh, that is a great question. Yes, they are. And what is so exciting for me is that I can share it with all of my friends and family who've never been started before or been involved in the industry before. So what I like to do is bring everybody out to ride my horses, to go feed them and pet them. And they really love it because it gives them something fun to do. And then they understand why I love it so much. So everybody has ended up being involved in it with me. And my brothers even started raising turkeys and chickens because they wanted to play a role in the industry. That's cool. Oh. Yeah. I, the other day I met a five-year-old who sold, she had a hundred chickens and she's selling eggs to raise money for college someday. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. That's Any really other crazy. Really crazy. Any other questions? Okay, well, you all are doing great. You are such great listeners, and I love how engaged you are in talking with me. I love talking, and I love talking with cute cowgirls just like you all. So let's talk about my adventure so far. This weekend, I got to pick up my rodeo shaft. So you may have seen a cowgirl before, but what's different about rodeo queens is that we have a crown, we have a sash, we have a buckle, and sometimes we wear shafts when we're riding in the rodeo. So in some of my photos, you could see me running a horse with a flag. So we carry flags, sometimes the American flag, sometimes the Colorado flag. Those are my favorite parts. I love riding the horses. And when we're doing that, we're wearing our rodeo shafts. So as you can see, my shafts, I love them. They're white and pink and turquoise, and they have a cross to represent my faith and my favorite flowers. One of them is a columbine, which is Colorado state flower. So way back in the day when the cowboys and on the ranches had to go by really sharp brush, they wore their shafts to protect their legs. And now sometimes we wear them for style. In the middle picture, recently I went to South Dakota for a rodeo. And so we stopped by Mount Rushmore. I met my sash sisters there. That's what I call my friends who are also state title holders. And I also went to Florida. So as you can see, sometimes we ride horses, but sometimes we get chances to wrangle gators. So that was one of my favorite memories is visiting the gators in Florida. And then one of my very exciting, most favorite memories is picking up my Chevy Silverado to drive for the year because we also have a trailer so that we can pull our horses. So you can see up in the corner, that is my Chevy. And guess what? I have ridden in 35 rodeos so far, and I've got many more to go. Okay. Was it, was it what was that? To, was it hard to wrestle the crocodile? You know, she was actually very, very calm that day. So it was pretty easy, luckily. I'm not sure I would have I would have gotten the picture if not. Good thing she was. Did you guys what, was the what was that? Did you go to a lot of places? Oh yeah, lots of places. And that's what's exciting about what's in store next. So I might be going to guess where Alaska. I will also be going to Nebraska. I'll be going all over to the Eastern Plains of Colorado, up into the mountains. And I might even take a trip to Kansas and also Texas because this November, I will be running for the title of Miss Rodeo America. So you can see in the bottom left, do you see how those crowns are different than the one I'm wearing? That is the crown of Miss Rodeo America. And I love this picture because Miss Haley, that's my friend who won Miss Rodeo America this year, who was last year Miss Rodeo Colorado. It looks like she's taking the hat off the, the previous Miss Rodeo, the crown off of the previous Miss Rodeo America's hat. And I thought that was so silly. And so I'll be running for Miss Radio America. I'm going to work really hard because, of course, I would love to win, but I'm so excited about the journey until then. So as you can see, I'm riding a beautiful black horse with the Colorado flag. I'll get to do that at so many more rodeos this year. 
And I also wanted to share with you a picture of flowers. She was a beautiful paint horse that I rode in Florida. And this is a picture of me standing by a shoot. Um, the red shirt with the red outfit with the red shoots that's in Rodeo Rapid City in South Dakota. And that shoe is what the rough stock, which are the bucking bulls and the bucking horses jump out of at the rodeo. Was it your goal to be a cowgirl? It was, yes. For me, when I first got started, I was a little bit nervous because I'd never been a cowgirl before and everybody did it so well. And so I decided I'm going to make it my goal to also be a really great cowgirl. So I worked really hard. I rode my horses almost every single day. I studied a lot and I learned the ways of being a cowgirl. So I learned how to find the right boots, the right hats, and the different ways that I could learn about how to care for my animals. Okay. <laughs> really great question. Any more? Do you travel the world? Oh, that's what we're going to start talking about next. So you guys are just asking perfect questions, leading all into my um, presentation perfectly. So how, at you, my how much do you get paid? So that is a, that's a really great question. So as Miss Rodeo Colorado, we are actually, it's an unpaid opportunity. So what we do is we um, pave our way through sponsorships and we also host a fundraiser to raise money for our year. Great questions. You all are smart young ladies. So when I worked in the inter International Department at the American Quarter Horse Association, I worked with people in 137 different countries around the world. So if you can believe it, people all across the globe love the horse and the American Quarter Horse specifically. So while I was there, I managed a variety of programs. I translated material into a lot of different languages, for example, Portuguese and Spanish and Italian and French and Finnish and Danish even, which were really crazy languages to me. But my favorite parts of my job was traveling. So up here in the top corner with the horse, this was when I was in Mexico City at a horse race because they have a huge industry and people who love races, quarter horse racing. And so what was my favorite memory about that one is that the race was named after me. It was the Ashley Baller race. The picture next to that, I was in Germany. And then below that, I was in Italy. And then the bottom corner to the right, that was at my office in Texas. And we had one of our American Quarter Horse members vid visiting us from Colombia. So, so far, I've been able to ride a horse in Germany, which was one of my goals. I really wanted to ride a horse in another country, but it was so fun getting to meet people who loved horses just as much as I do around the world. Okay, are you ready to learn about my horses? Yeah. Great, so the gray horse, the one that looks white in the bottom corner, that's Jack, and he was my show horse growing up. The horse in the middle, that is Miss Angel, and I started riding her when she was a baby. I trained her from the very first time she ever had someone put a halter, which is a rope that we use to guide them around with the lead rope. Um, and then all the way into a saddle in her first ride. And the horse on the far right, that's a paint horse. And that is Miss Jasmine. And I trained her from a baby when I was in the fifth grade. So the day she was born, I love this story. I went out to the, to the barn and I sat on the dirt and she actually came and laid down in my lap. That's one of my favorite stories. So these are my horses and I try and ride Jasmine and Angel almost every day. So before we quickly talk about horses, I wanted to tell you some ways that you can get involved in the equine world or the agricultural world. So like I said, you can join 4-H. They have that all across the United States and in every county almost. So you can ask your parents to look up 4-H and find a club near you because you don't have to have a horse or an animal to get started. They have clubs where you can learn all about horses without even having one. 
Same with the Future Farmers of America. They have those in schools. And there's actually many more local riding clubs around than you might think. So even if you're nervous, I encourage everybody to learn more about horses, even if you just go and get books at the library or go, or go and try and ride them. They're big, but they're a lot of fun. AQHA, the American Quarter Horse Association, always also has some really fun resources for you to learn about horses. They have some really cool drawing pages online. You can volunteer at an equine therapeutic riding center, too. So there's lots of different ways that if you're interested, you can get up close and personal with my favorite animal in the world. So can anybody notice the difference between these two saddles? One is English and one is um, Western. Yes, perfect. And do we see that the English saddle, it ha it doesn't have a horn like the Western saddle. So the English saddle is on top and you can see the bridle there. And it looks a lot different than the Western saddle. And the English saddle is designed that way for events like jumping or dressage. And you might not wanna jump in a Western saddle. You might hurt yourself if you do that. But you can see my horse, Angel, my bay on the right, and that's her in her Western bridle. So I wanted to show you what that looks like on a horse. And I love that one because it's pink and turquoise. Nutrition. So horses always need access to clean water. They drink about five to 10 gallons a day, which is a lot. They also eat grain sometimes. Right now my horses are just eating hay, but since my mares are going to be starting to work more and work a lot harder amid the rodeo season, I'll give them grain like oats and barley and corn and wheat. And they get hay every morning and night right now. So hay comes in a bale. And in each bale, the, the hay is divided into leaves. And so they get two leaves every morning and night of grass and sometimes alfalfa. And what else they love is eating out in the pasture. And that's where they can roam around and sometimes miles and miles of open range to eat all the grass they want. Next is vet care. So with your our horses, we have to make sure that they get vaccinated. Some of you may have had a vaccine before, maybe not. But if you've seen them or heard about them, horses get them too. And that's how we protect them from various diseases that they can sometimes get from drinking in each other's water buckets or even from mosquitoes or flies. So we like to keep them extra safe at horse shows and our vets help to make sure that our horse's eyes look good, that their mouths look good, and they help to evaluate if anything goes wrong. So farrier care. This is me with my farrier a couple weeks ago. He's one of my best friends, his name is Cash. And he's been my farrier since I was in the fifth grade. And my paint horse here with Jazzy, you can see him measuring the um, slope of her heel and the angle of her shoulder so that it matches the angle of her hoof. And so I have my farrier out every six to eight weeks to keep my horse's hooves keeping nice and shaped. So it's almost like whenever we go to get manicures or um, if we like to get our nails done, we like to keep the horse's hooves balanced so that they can work well. And something crazy that I always thought was that horses get dental care too. So horses are herbivores and because of that, their teeth are a little bit different than ours. They don't have strong um, molars that are meant to pull apart things that are carnivores that they might eat. So because of that and the way they eat, their teeth move side to side. And if you don't keep their teeth filed down to where they're balanced and wearing the same, they can really hurt the insides of their mouth. So what I would like to tell you all is to live your dream. So this is a picture of me when I was, I think, about 12 years old. And I am riding Jack, who is my show horse. You saw him a little bit earlier, and he was white. And at the time, I wasn't as confident in my riding. But over the years, I learned how to be a better cowgirl. And so I want you all to know that you can do anything you put your mind to, so long as you work hard and you have the confidence to make it happen. 
So I'm really excited if some of you end up being cowgirls someday, and I would love to support you on your journey. So we have a couple of minutes left, and I wanted to let you know that you can learn more about myself and Miss Rodeo Colorado at the Miss Rodeo Colorado pageant.com. Or if you are old enough and you are allowed to go on Facebook or Instagram, or maybe your parents can show you, we have um, some pages on there as well where you can keep up with my travels for the year. So I'm so excited to be able to speak with you all today. Thank you so much for being such great listeners and for asking such great questions. Um, do we have any more questions today? Yeah. Um, yeah. How, how do you guys get... How do you guys not get paid, but you, but you guys have the horses? Yes. So what I did is I saved my money from my previous job so that I could take care of my horses, but I have a really loving community of sponsors and I fundraised enough money this year to make sure that I could take care of my horses. So it's all working out perfectly. And that's how we do it. We'll usually move home so we don't have to pay for rent and then we'll move our horses home too. So we don't have to pay for board for them. And board is what you pay when you keep your horse at a facility other than your own home. Okay. I have a question. Um, when, like, when you're not at a rate rodeo or um, not riding horses, do you have like um, another job that you do? I don't. So I worked at the AQHA for three years and I stopped working there on December 30th so that I could officially start this job on the first because it's full time, believe it or not. So when I'm not at events, I'm preparing for the next event and designing clothes for upcoming appearances and um, studying and making sure that my knowledge is being maintained. Cool. I forgot the question you told me that, what do you need, what do you do to be a, um, what does it take to be a rodeo princess? Sure. So beyond riding a horse, you have to be practiced in speaking to the community, whether you're on a stage, you're on a phone, you're writing an email or you're in a crowd. So you have to be able to speak well and hold a conversation so you have to give speeches. Also, you have to be able to model and have a stage presence so that when you're walking into a room or even just into a barn, you're holding yourself to a standard of confidence for yourself. So you have to be able to speak and you have to be um, willing to stay up to date on all sorts of events. But at the end of the day, you have to be able to smile and have fun. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, of course. What other questions do we have? What type of water do horses drink? They drink the water that comes out of the faucet, just the normal old water. But a fun fact is that sometimes they don't like the taste of water in other locations. So we'll give them Gatorade and then they like to drink it a little bit more. Time to ask a question. Ivy, do you have a question? Uh, she would like to know, <laughs> uh, how you talk to your horse and how you make it obey you. Sure. So I, let's see, I'll stop sharing here so you can see my face. <laughs> so I take care of, uh, I talk to my horse just like I talk to you all. So they are my best friends and they like to be, um, scrubbed and rubbed on just like we do. So I talk to them just like my friends. Any other questions, friends? Well, you had some really great questions. I love all, all the ideas and things that you girls have thought of to ask. You learned a lot, haven't you? Yes. Yeah. I have a question. You have a question? It's not really a question, but I have a saddle at home, and it's a Western saddle. My dad bought it at California. Ooh. And oh, I also that? have a little horse stool that we put it on and ride. 
That is so cool. Oh my gosh, I love it. I'm sure you can ride it really well. You might be able to um, sit in a saddle better than I can on my horse. <laughs> do you fall uh, off of your horse sometimes? I do. I've fallen off my horse sometimes. And guess what? When, when I was younger, before my very first rodeo, a horse hit me in the face with their neck and I lost my two front teeth. So I've had a couple of horse accidents before. Yes, that's one of the ones that you remember pretty well. <laughs> oh, definitely. That one sticks out. But you know, the fun part about it is when you just get back up. Well, the first time I fell off, my grandpa said, you just got to get back on. And that's how I look at other events in life. If something goes wrong, you just hop back in the saddle and try again. How many, um, how many, uh, times have you fallen off of, her, of a horse? Ooh, I, you know what? I think I lost track, but rumor has it after you've fallen off seven times, you're officially a cowgirl. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great way to feel good about falling off a horse. <laughs> yes. When you start colts like I do, um, the chances of falling off are more um, frequent than on older, more broke horses. <laughs> mm, got it. All right, girls. Well, thank you so much, Ashley, for joining us on Inspiring Futures. It was absolutely fantastic to hear about your journey and what it's like to be you. And thank hopefully you. some girls, you've been so inspired about everything you've heard. Yeah. Ivy, do you have thank another you, question, thank Ivy? No, I'm just saying thank you. Oh, thank you. That's so nice of you. <laughs> thank you, Miss so Maria. Thank, Thank you. you. I hope to see you all at a rodeo. Show you. Thanks, Girl Scouts. Have a great night. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Thank <laughs> you. Well, goodbye. Bye.